Hello, welcome back again to Professional English One. My name is Marco Mesa, as you know, and we are going to work with the verb tenses this time. Uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the lesson plan, we have the present and the present perfect, the past and the past perfect, the future and the future perfect. The consistency of tense, models, and general review. Okay, um, verbs are probably the most important parts in a sentence. They will show the action or state of being that is indicated or described by a sentence. In the example, we have the verb fly that is in the third singular person, that is flies, and is indicating an action in the present. We also have different forms. In the past tense, we have regular and irregular verbs. In the example, we have an irregular verb that is fly and the past tense form is flew. In the future, we use an auxiliary will and the infinitive of the verb fly. The tense of the verb will indicate, as, as we have already said, the time of the action and the state of being. And in the present, we have uh, two forms, the infinitive and the third person singular form. In this case, we have when plays guitar in a jazz band. Okay, plays is the third person singular form. Okay. Uh, we also have pers present perfect tenses, and in English, these are very common and very much used most of the time. In the present perfect, we use an auxiliary. The auxiliary in the present perfect tense is the auxiliary have. Have is the uh, simple form, and has is the third person singular form. Okay, she has played in the band for three years. She has played. Has played is the verb phrase that indicates the present perfect. It's an action that started three years ago and probably uh, continues at the present and hopefully it will continue in the future. And a future action is expressed using the auxiliary will and the infinitive form of the verb. Gwen will play in a concert tomorrow. Okay, we have a verb phrase again, two words that indicate the action of the verb, and this is one of the forms of the future. The future uh, will have at least three forms to express is it. The will form, the going to be form, and the gerund form, or the progressive form. Okay? We also have the future perfect. She will have played in 10 concerts by April. Will have played. We are using two auxiliaries in conjunction. Will is the future, have is the perfect auxiliary, and playing is the past participle form. She will have played in 10 concerts by April. Okay, this is indicating an action that will be finished by April. Uh, period of time, a line of time in the, in the future, a point in the time and future. In the past tense, we have one form for each verb. The regular verbs will add ed, d, or ied, as we have seen before, or irregular verbs will change the spelling. There are uh, some verbs that won't change any cut, hit, etc., that will have the same form for the infinitive and for the uh, past tense forms. Okay, the past perfect is an action that is, that is describing something that happened in a far past, to say something, uh, normally before something else that, it, that will be described in an additional sentence that will go uh, with uh, the past perfect sense. Or we have a timeline at a, a point in the past that indicates the precedence of the past perfect action described with, by this tense. She had played 
She had played violin before then. She had played, okay? Then is a time, it's a point in the past tense that uh, according to the context of the conversation, the sentence, or the story, or the text is defined, so the, um, the, uh, the action described has happened before uh, then, that moment that we already know, that we had already known. Okay? Uh, to generalize, the verbs, verbs in English has have four forms. The base form, the simple form, or the infinitive. Base form is, the, is another uh, word for infinitive or simple form. Smile or choose, for example. The present participle is the ing form. Smiling, choosing. Okay? Sometimes this smiling or choosing is um, expressed with a preceding form of the verb to be. I'm smiling, is smiling, or are smiling are the same. Uh, in the past tense, for example, was choosing, were choosing, or in the future, will be smiling, will be choosing. Okay? This form is also called the gerund. Smiling and choosing are called gerund forms of the verbs. In the past, we have normally two forms. Smile, smiled. Choose, chose. Okay? The past participle will also follow the same rule that in most of the cases with the, uh, when the verb is regular, is the same as the past tense form. Have smiled, have chosen. Okay? Smile is the same, uh, has the same uh, spelling than the past tense, in this case because it's a regular verb. But in the case of choose, we have an irregular verb and, verb and it changes from choose to chose in the past and to chosen in the participle. Okay. Uh, each tense has a progressive form or a continuous form that will uh, give information about a continuum, continuing action or state of being. The present progressive uses the verb to be, am, are, is talking, and it, it normally expresses an action that is uh, happening or is being performed at the time of speaking. Uh, in some cases, this type of uh, tense will express a future action. Okay? The past progressive also uses the verb to be, was, were, talking, okay? the ing for after the verb to be in the past. The future progressive will or shall be talking. Remember that shall is used for the first person plural and singular. Okay, be talking. The verb to be, followed by the ing form. Will be is the future. The present perfect progressive is also uh, using the verb to be, but in this case, be because it's a present perfect or past perfect uh, progressive, if, if necessary, being is the past participle form. Has, have been talking. And the Main verb is with the ing form, the gerund form, the progressive form, the continuous form. All these words will define the, this part of the verb, this form of the verb. The past perfect progressive had been talking. In the past tense, we have only, only one form of the auxiliary, had. The verb to be goes in the past participle form, being, and the next verb the main verb is in the ing form. The future perfect progressive also will or shall have been talking. Will have been talking. Okay? This is a time that is going to be uh, studied with more... Um, it's going to be more studied in the second course. 
Okay, and by, by the final um, part of this course, it's going to be treated in the third conditional form, uh, with a slight variation because it's a conditional form. In the present tense, that we can express actions happening at the moment we are talking or actions that are regularly or things that will normally happen no matter what. Today we honor our veterans. Polly is marking in the parade. This is the progressive or the continuous form. The present tense is used to show a customary or a habitual action or a state of being, something that normally happens. We sleep at night, normally. We recycle our aluminum cans, okay? To express a general truth, for example, the sun rises in the east. It will happen always, unless there is a big change. To make historical events seem current, so that's what they call historical present. In 1927, Charles Lindbergh flies non-stop across the Atlantic. This is a very particular form used in uh, academic English, in, well, not only in academic, but in uh, formal English. Okay? Uh, to discuss a literary work, in grapes of wrath, wrath, sorry, in grapes of wrath, Stamek shows us the extremes of life during the Depression. Okay? Uh, actually, Grapes of Wrath was written a long time ago, but we can read it at the moment, and this is why we use show, shows in this case, Steinbeck, Nobel Prize. To express future time, we travel to Utah next month. As I told you, this is something that is arranged, fixed in the future, so we can use the present tense to express these ideas. We travel to Utah next month. Okay, the present perfect will show an action that was started or happened in a determinate, uh, from a determinate time in the past, or in an indefinite time in the past. Let's see. My has been in several jobs. In this case, we don't express the, the, the sentence, it's not given information about the exact time, but it is expressing the idea that it started in the past, it continued in the present, it continued in the present probably. Okay? Uh, the helping verb or auxiliary have is used in this case. Have is for I, you, we, they. And has, the, the has form is used in the third person singular, he, she, on it. And after that, the past participle comes. The past participle of the main verb comes. He has played the drum in all of them. So, he has played. Has is the auxiliary, played is the past participle form, and the complement, obviously. Do you remember that in one of the, our first classes, we said that in English, most sentences will have a subject, a verb, and a complement? In that order, okay, in this case we have a subject, a verb phrase, and a complement. The present perfect tense is also used to express an action or a state of being that began in the past and continues, as I told you. In this case, perfect means complete. That's why it is the name, the present perfect, the complete present. Mr. Lee has taught music at our school since 2004. In this case, we are talking about an action that started in, 2000, in 2004 or 2004 and continues at the moment. Yoko has been taking flute lessons for six years. 
In this case, we are talking about an action that started six years ago and continues up to the moment, has been taken. This is the progressive form of the present perfect, the present perfect progressive or the present perfect continuous, as some people uh, name it. Uh, has is the auxiliary of the present perfect, being is the past participle form and taken is the progressive or continuous form or gerund form of the verb take. Uh, the past tense will express actions that started and finished in the past and not continue in the present. To, the two friends share the large swing. Okay, shared is the past form of the verb share. It, in this case, you know it's a regular verb. And the action is expressed in the sentence to indicate that it started in the past and finished in the past. And we also have <coughs> a progressive form. They were swinging for a long time. Okay, where is the verb to be for the plural in the past tense? Swinging is the continuous or progressive form and this expresses a situation that was uh, occurring at a very uh, particular time in the past. The past perfect tense, as we said, describe actions or situations that happened before another period of time. After Maria had gone home, Kim was bored. So, what happened first? Maria going home. And what was the next thing that Kim was bored? So, this tense is constructed using the past form of the uh, auxiliary have that is had and the past participle of the main verb. Okay? And another example is she asked her dad about the time that he had been a lifeguard at the beach. This sentence is given information about uh, a question that she did and in the question she requests information from a previous period of time. Okay, so we understand that in this sentence uh, that the, uh, the dad, the father, was a lifeguard at the beach before she asked the question. Okay. In the future we have will as a regular auxiliary. One of the forms of the future is with will. My family will ride a train to Chicago. Okay, will ride is future, will is the auxiliary, ride is the infinitive form, the simple form of the verb. Uh, we can also use shall for the first, singular and plural forms. The progressive form also will indicate an action or situation happening uh, in a very particular time in the future. We will be arriving at five o'clock. Will is the auxiliary of the future, be is the simple form of the verb to be, and arriving is the continuous form. Be arriving is actually uh, the, the, part, the part of the verb phrase that gives us information of the continuous form. Will be arriving is the verb phrase that indicates a future action. The future perfect tense is also another form of the future that indicates an action that is going to be completed or started or finished at a very definite period in the future, a very, a very period or a point in the future. By the time you receive this letter, she will have returned it home. Okay. Before you receive this letter, she 
return it, uh, uh, she will return home okay she will have returned home this tense is formed by using the auxiliary will the auxiliary have of the perfect tenses and returned is the past participle form of the verb she will have returned home um, we can also use shall even when shall is quite a bit formal but it gives a a very good impression when used when it's being used because the speaker is considered an educated or a formal uh, person in the speech or writing after this trip he will have been to chicago three times okay uh, again we have the auxiliary will the the verb uh, the other auxiliary have and the main verb is in the past participle form in the previous example we have returned in the past participle form after this trip he will have been to chicago three times okay please change the tense of the verb in each sentence as indicated in the parenthesis i do not meet, miss the bus it needs to be changed to the future in the second to the past perfect, in the third to the future, in the fourth to the past progressive, and in the fifth to the past. In the first, I do not miss the bus. Future, will, I will not miss the bus. We use the auxiliary and the negative particle and the simple form of the verb in the infinitive. Where were they at the party? Where is a verb to be? In the past perfect, we need to use the auxiliary. What is the auxiliary? Had. And when we use the auxiliary had, the verb to be <coughs> is after the subject. It always goes after the subject. So we have had they been at the party? And been also is also the past participle form of the verb to be. We have changed the form of the verb and also the location, the place it goes in a sentence because we are using an auxiliary and when we, are, when we use an auxiliary with the verb to be, the verb to be normally goes after the subject. Okay, in number three. By then, Keith in the future, we use the auxiliary will, by then, Keith will return. But as we had already mentioned, the future will and the future is going to be, are, uh, or is going to, are much used in the English. So, an option in this case is going to be, by then, Keith is going to return. Okay? Is going to return. In number four, the team will practice from an hour with no break to the past progressive. In the past progressive, we have the verb to be and uh, the past form of the verb to be and the ing form of the other verb. Let's see. The team was practicing for an hour with no break. The verb to be was, because it's a singular subject, Practicing is the gerund or ing form of the verb, okay? And the complement is what comes next. My sister dances well. My sister danced well because it's the simple past. Danced is the past form of this regular verb. Okay, it is also important to keep, to keep a consistent of time. Times in texts and speech need to be consistent, coherent, okay? Uh, if we are talking about events that occur, have occurred, occurred, or yeah, will occur, we need to use the, the, the same tense for all the verbs, and if they are occurring at the same time, more than one event, so it is quite advisable to use the same things for all verbs. Sarah picked over the fence and saw a cornfield. Okay, 
we have the verb pick in the past tense pick it, and uh, this is a regular verb, and so that is the past tense of the verb see, which is an irregular verb. She picked it over the fence and saw a cornfield. Okay, two things. We are keeping the coherence of time for the past tense. Pick it and so are simple past tense forms. But we are also using what is obvious. In this case, we are talking about Sarah, and we don't need to use Sarah in the second sentence. We have two sentences in this two uh, statements in this sentence. Sarah picked over the fence. That describes an action. And saw a cornfield. This part, uh, this uh, statement should be understood as Sarah saw a cornfield. But we don't need to use Sarah to understand that she is also the subject of the second sentence. In the present, that Sarah picks over the fence and sees a cornfield. The same explanations we did apply here for the present tense. Picks is the third singular person, and sees is also the same form of in the present. Two events that occur at different times, we need to use the corresponding forms of the verbs. The guy wished that he had practiced more before the game. Okay, we have wished, that is the past tense, in some period of the past, but had practiced is something that occurred before the wish. Before the guy wishing, he should have practiced. Okay? The past tense, the past perfect tense. The past perfect tense in this sentence describes a situation, an action that happened before the past tense expressed in the first sentence. Okay? The action of wishing happened before, sorry, after the action of practicing. Okay? Or actually not uh, action but a situation or an um, imaginary situation. Uh, at different times, again, we need to show the sequence of events if necessary. Yesterday, Nina told us that her brother works every week at the senior center. What is the meaning, what uh, is this sentence expressing in terms of time? Okay, Nina, in the past, told us that her brother in the present is working or works every week at a senior center. So we are giving information following a line of time. The telling action, the telling occur before the working, or actually before we understood that. Okay? Let's change the tenses. and try to um, make consistency of times of time and all these texts need to be coherent. Please read clearly and let me uh, read this. I was in my room Saturday morning planning to study for two hours. To my surprise, Nancy Chang drops by, she dashed into the house, runs up the stairs and calls my name. What she wanted was a fishing companion. As I get my fishing year together, I was so happy. On our way to the lake, we noticed some dark clouds. We wished we checked the weather first. Okay, as you may have noticed, this action occurs in the past. So we need to express most verbs in the past. Analyzing, we have come to this conclusion. I was in my room Saturday morning, planning to study for two hours. To my surprise, Nancy Chang dropped by, in the past tense. 
She dashed into the room, ran up the stairs. Run is, uh, sorry, that should be with an A, ran up the stairs and called my name. What she wanted was a fishing companion. As I got my fishing jar together, I was so happy. On our way to the lake, we noticed some dark clouds. We wished we had checked the weather first. Okay, had checked is in the past tense because that is an action that should, should have been performed before going to the lake or wherever they went. Uh, please, I, in number three, is wrong in the past tense. Re remember that and if necessary, correct it on your notes. Uh, okay, we have a very particular group of verbs that are called modals. A modal is a helping verb, is a verb that normally goes with another one and uh, it will give some qualities, some explanations, some changes in what we are expressing when we use this. Uh, verbs that are used as models are can, how to, could, may, might, and must. Repeat, can, how to, could, may, might, and must. Shall, should, will, and would are also models, but they are auxiliary models. The others I mentioned before are Ver or modal verbs or verb models. Okay, can and could express ability, physical ability most of the time. Tommy can play point guard in the second half. Okay, this is a basket uh, situation and in the second example we have the team could have made better shots. Okay, this is a possibility in the past using could and it be, and the form it is expressed, it is a uh, non-true, it was an imaginary situation. May and might are also, are also models and they express some possibilities, permission, okay? Yes, you may borrow my sweater, okay? May borrow the possibility of you to asking me for or asking me to lend you my sweater. So this uh, will have the understanding that I will lend my sweater to you. A possibility, my clothes closet may be too full. Okay, uh, the person that is speaking is trying to express an idea that she has realized or that has reached the conclusion that the closet may be too full. The model might is used most of the time to, ex to only express possibility. And sometimes the possibility is not that strong. I might give some of my clothing to the charity. Okay? I might give the possibility of giving the clothes to charity. Thank you very much. And we are going to meet again next time.